Hello, I am Luc Robert, and together with Denis Biganet, we are going to give you an introduction to the iTwin Reality Services. I will first give an overview of what these services do and what problems they solve for end users. We will focus on three services, context capture, reality data analysis, and reality data. Through a joint use of these three services, we will see how to operate different workflows. In a first example, we will reconstruct a 3D mesh from photos. In a second use case, we will perform object detection in images using machine learning. We will then see how to consume the results and give resources if you want to learn more about these services. First, the context capture service. Well, it allows one to capture the physical reality of infrastructure assets and their surroundings. So starting from photos, such as the one shown on the left, the service produces a 3D textured mesh that is an accurate digital replica of the real world, such as the one in the middle. In an intermediate step, the process estimates the translations, rotations, and internal parameters for all the photos that are used in this example, over a thousand images acquired from a drone. This information is usually called orientation. Through this complete geometric understanding of the scene and the original photos, we establish full correspondence between the 3D mesh and the photos. For instance, by selecting a point on the mesh, we can actually derive its position in all the photos in which it is visible. In this other example, we produce not only a 3D mesh photo orientations, but also a map or author photo. The service can also produce colored point clouds. With the reality data analysis service, you can run analysis processes on infrastructure assets based on machine learning. You can, for instance, detect objects in photos as shown here on the right. And through photo orientations, you can actually derive their actual 3D location and size in 3D space. You can also detect and extract complex uh, object shapes, such as cracks, both in 2D here on the right and in 3D uh, here on the left. In this other example, roof shapes are detected in an ortho photo. The reality data service can also perform segmentation on point clouds and even detect license plates or faces to blur them to preserve, preserve privacy when using the photos. When operating these services, one needs to manipulate, store, and share all the input and output data. This so-called reality data can be of different types, collections of photos, of point clouds, 3D meshes, photo orientations, geolocalization information, etc. The reality data services is an access point to the reality data. The data is stored in Azure Blob containers, and a Nightwin application can obtain SAS tokens from the reality data service to get read or write access to the Azure container. In a first use case, we will see how to create and fill a reality data. The data has a number of properties, most of which are optional. The most important one is its type. In this example, we will create a reality data of type CC image collection which is typically a container that holds a number of photos to provide as input to one of the services. For this, we send a post request to the service with a payload that contains at least the type, here CC image collection, and a classification that has to be undefined for the CC image collection. In the response, we get the ID of the reality data that will be used in all subsequent steps of the process. Now that the data has been created, we can start populating it with images. For this, we send a GET request 
with the reality data ID, the iTwin ID to which it is associated, and the access type we want to the container here, right. Finally, we can upload the photos to the container using Azure client components to interact with containers and blobs and the URL returned by the reality data service. Let us now look at how to create a mesh from photos. We will see how to prepare the input data, to create and submit a job, to monitor a running job and get its result once finished. We have already seen how to create a CC image collection on RDS. Another input reality data is needed with the CC orientations type. It contains an XML file that describes all the photos that should be used in the process and references the image collection. In more complex workflows, this file can also contain metadata telling more about the photos such as a priori information on their position or orientation in space when available. We will stick to the most simple case here. Now that we have all the data available on RDS, which stands for Reality Data Service, we can create a job. For this, we start by creating its workspace, which is a reality data that will hold all the intermediate data created by the job during its execution. This can be done by sending a POST request to the workspace's endpoint with a very simple payload containing the iTwin ID. Creating the job itself is done through another POST request to the job's endpoint with the payload specifying the input image collection and CC orientations and the requested outputs. Here we ask for a full process that will compute photo orientations, then a mesh at the Cesium 3D tiles format. Access to both results is requested in the output settings. In the response, we get an ID that will allow perform operations on the created job. The first operation we will do is start the job. This is done through a patch request to the job's endpoint, changing its states to active. Now that the job is running, we can monitor its progress by sending GET requests to the job's endpoint, specifying its ID and asking for progress. The response tells us about the current step of the job, its percentage of completion, and whether it is still active or if it has completed. Once the job has completed, a GET request will provide all the needed information on whether the job succeeded. And the reality data IDs of the two requested outputs. If we look closely at the output CC orientations data, we can see that it contains for each photo all details about its position, rotation, geolocalization, etc. The mesh at the Cesium 3D tiles format can be viewed using the iTwin platform components. We have seen how to create a 3D mesh using the iTwin context capture service. Let us now look at how to perform reality data analysis. Using the reality data analysis service, what we want to do here is to detect vehicles in a collection of photos. For this, we first create and populate a CC image collection on the reality data service, just like we did before. Then we create a reality data of another type named context scene that lists the images to be processed and references the image collection.
The third reality data item we need to provide is a detector. A number of detectors are available on communities.bentley.com. Just download the one you need and add it to a new reality data you create with the right type. These detectors, based on machine learning, have been trained to perform specific tasks. Here, we are using a detector with the photo object detector type. Creating, submitting, monitoring, and getting the job results is very analogous to what we have done with a context capture service. The 2D object detector returns a new context scene with bounding boxes surrounding the detected objects with additional metadata. This is what you get when displaying the boxes on top of the image. Running another detector on the same exact data will provide different, uh, results of a different kind. Here, for instance, we have identified all image pixels corresponding to vehicles. I will now hand over to Denis Bigonet, who is going to present you a minimal sample application that demonstrates the use of the services and shows examples of how to display the output data. Hi, everyone. I'm going to show the web application we have developed to upload reality data, run services, and display the results. This application is supposed to be uh, an example to show how the services are working. So first of all, the jobs input the data have to be uploaded on reality data services. That's why we added an upload functionality. So um, I have to provide a, a local path to upload, for, for example, this image collection. So I paste the ID. I also have to set the, the data type, which is image collection. I click on upload and it may take a few seconds to upload it. And we get the ID that uniquely identifies the data on reality data services. It can be used as a job input. Once the data is uploaded on reality data services, it's possible to run reality data analysis jobs, such as uh, 2D objects, 2D segmentation, and 3D lines. I'm going to run um, a 2D segmentation job. It needs two inputs. The first one is the context scene uh, containing the references to the uploaded image collection. And the second one is the detector, which is a cracks detector. I click on run and we can see the job is running. Well, it could take some time. Therefore, I'm going to cut this part from the video. Okay, so the job is completed. It's exactly the same process for context capture. In this tab, we can display the 2D outputs from the job. This is the result of the 2D segmentation job I, I ran previously. We can see some cracks in red. Um, about the viewer, it's a very basic one. The images and the annotations are displayed in their own canvas. The annotations on top of the images. And there are a few buttons to show the previous and next images. And other buttons to zoom in or zoom out. We can display 2D jobs outputs, but also 3D jobs outputs. As you can see, uh, this 3D viewer is based on 8Win technologies. For example, I can show some meshes and 3D annotations. I start with a small bridge example. So I paste an ID here. I click on display and also on feed view to see the bridge. That's uh, cesium 3D tiles, so we can see the different level of detail to be loaded and unloaded. To 
display the annotations, I just replace the previous ID by the annotation ID and we should see the cracks. As the CGM3 details are optimized for streaming, I can show a, a bigger example. This bridge is about 2 GB. I'm also displaying the annotations. Uh, there, are, uh, there are a lot of cracks in white. That's, that's pretty all about this application. We plan to add it in the iTwin platform samples and I'm going to pass the end to Luke for the conclusion. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Denis. In this presentation, we saw the main concepts about the iTwin reality services and how to operate the main workflows. Host and share reality data, reconstruct a mesh from photos, and perform detection in photos using machine learning. Here are links to the documentation of the services APIs. Once again, all the code samples that we showed will be made publicly available to iTwin developers. Please follow this link when you want to start building your own applications. And uh, thank you for watching.